the Inter-Party Advisory Council is calling on the All Progressives Congress and President-elect Bola Tinubu to zone the Senate presidency of the 10th National Assembly to either the Southeast or South-South. The Council's National Chairman, Yabagi Sani, says zoning will restore all Nigerians' confidence in the country's unity. If the, the suggestion of the IPAC will help to restore confidence of the people from the Southeast and South-South geopolitical -South zones, and indeed all Nigerians, in the oneness of this country. Also, we have a precedence in the example of Chief Olusegun PDP government in 1999, when it deliberately zoned the central presidency to the southeast, the speaker to the northwest, the deputy speaker to the deputy senate president to North Central, Deputy Speaker to South South. And the Interparty Advisory Council Chairman Yabagi Sani joins us in the studio live. And good to see you and thanks for your time. Uh, perhaps that this is already set in the agenda for the coming administration in, in the days ahead. But quickly here, let us in on what this would mean for us to have a, a country that is fairly represented by people. Does this has, uh, have anything to do with the uh, federal character? Uh, principle? Very much so. It has to do because uh, your principal officers in the National Assembly, uh, along with the executive and judiciary, are the portrait of the country. And the portrait must be right. You know, that's what we are saying. As you can see, if we do not take deliberate steps to make, you know, the, uh, how that portrait emerges, will have something that we'll not be proud of because we have issues you know, around uh, religion, ethnicity, region, and uh, what have you. So we don't want those things to interfere you know, in the uh, next uh, administration you know, ability to perform because if from the takeoff you, you, you sort of uh, uh, put uh, baggages, you know, uh, you know, a, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, trans, you know, restraining, uh, you know, in, in terms of how they can hit the ground running and then put the whole country together and get us out of the quagmire we are in today. Uh, we have not done, you know, service to this nation. And as IPAC, you know, we represent the the the, the soul of the democracy in this country. Our job is to deepen democracy the roots of democracy, whatever we can do to deepen democracy in this most populous nation on the continent of Africa, that's what we are there for. And uh, we believe that all lovers of democracy and people who are passionate about this country, you know, uh, achieving its uh, greatness, will uh, subscribe to what we have put forward because this is not the first time it's been done in this country. And we have seen that it has worked very well for the country. You know, you had stability, yeah, people, you know, everybody was on, on the same page to speak, you know, in the act of governance. And uh, like I said, this country is a promise of greatness. We all know that. But you must get how you package, you know, the, the government itself, you know, in a way that will reflect uh, our character, will reflect our being, will give people assurance that we all belong and we are we, and we matter. So that's what it's all about. That's why we came out at the time we did to say that we need to, you know, uh, 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 be a, a, little, a little bit more uh, nationalistic, if I may use the word. You know, yes, uh, and, yeah. uh, and I'm sure uh, as how diverse we are in this country, Nigerians understand the importance of having every zone accommodated exactly. in sort of the power sharing equation. But I'd like to play devil's advocate for a little bit. IPAC urges that the APC and president-elect should zone the Senate presidency to the South, South or South East. Now I'd like to ask what would those zones benefit from that, apart from sort of in a country where we see politicians only benefiting. If you give the South East or South South Senate presidency, who does it really benefit? And also, should we not be more focused on, like you said, ability to perform, 
competency, reliability, and all those uh, other issues. Well, well, you must agree with me that these are purely political matters. The, the level at which we are, to, we, are, we are discussing now, it's purely political because political in the sense that you are now talking about the three arms of government, the executive, the legislative, and also the judiciary. So you wouldn't want to miss the need for those arms to work harmoniously, independently in the interest of this country. And you can only have that if every, every segment of this country believes in what is imagined as the face of the government, because that, that will be the face of the government. And we, we, you know, we don't want to miss this opportunity. So that's why we're saying competence matters, of course, but we're believing and trusting without prejudice to the uh, matters that are before the court and things like that, that the president-elect, as we have it today, that's the reality we have today, and uh, we believe that, you know, uh, you know he, he will, at uh, uh, end of the day, we will have a government, isn't it? So we want to have a government that reflects our makeup, that represents all of us, that nobody will feel that you are being alienated, you know, from, from the power sharing, you know, and therefore, and like you know, you can take it from what is happening today. Part of the things that have not work for us is this issue of favoritism, you know, which people wrongly or rightly have ascribed to the, uh, to the present government, that the government did not take extra steps, you know, to ensure that some of these things, sentiments, you know, are factored into their, their, their policies, their presentation and things like that. We, to, we want to avoid that. And we are also looking forward to the next government to be deliberate, to be mindful, to, uh, to know, not, don't take things for granted. Because if you do, it will affect you know, the government end of the day. And we will be the worse off. So this is why competence matters, but plus competence, ensure that you represent us well. I, I like the bot there, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, because, Sani, because uh, this is more political. Because if you go back in time, recall the, the very infamous statement from President Buhari uh, then talking about the number of votes he got from Nigeria's southeast, which actually didn't help matters. Now, in trying to see that everyone is brought, you know, uh, on the table, because there's hardly no uh, any section of the country that you don't have a, fa a fantastic mind. Mm -hmm. Now, what would this mean for the coming administration? Because now you're setting the agenda. You also, IPAC is also warning, saying that Nigeria, for Nigeria to get it right this time, you need to look uh, to every part of the country. So this points to the man who will be uh, sworn in in the next uh, few days. So what uh, are we expecting? Well, what we're expecting is that we must learn from what has happened to, the, to us in terms of exactly what we're talking about now, how we are represented in the government. Because uh, if you don't make use of what happened to you, you can't call it experience. So it's only when you use what happened to you is then you can say you have experience. We have experience. We want to make sure we take advantage of it, that we go away from what we know has not served us well. You know, our security uh, situation, our economic situation, perhaps may be different. If everybody was given that sense of belonging and were contributing at, you know, 100% you know, level or uh, plus. So, so what we are saying in essence is that we must be mindful of our differences. We must use it to the advantage because you ignore it at your peril and that's what has happened. So that's why, and, and thank God, I'm sure that what will have emerged will be a full-fledged, you know, democratic government. What we've had all along, I think, is transition, you know, from the military to what you can call uh, a democratic governance. We have had civil rule. That's what we have had. So we are hoping that what will emerge today will be a de full-fledged democratic government that will work, you know, in line with those, you know, dictates of democracy itself, meaning that everybody should be taken, you know, as one. And then this country needs to have that and done as quickly as possible so that the next government will hit the ground running. Will not, because, like you know, the, 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 the strength, I mean, the, the, the chain is as strong as its weakest point. So that's what we are saying. We don't want to start with weakness, you know, embedded and, and, in the and system. The exciting point is that yeah. you're, you're optimistic. And I'm yeah. quite sure many Nigerians will also share in your optimism. Yabagi Sani, many thanks for being here Thank with you. us on Newsnight. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. Thank you.